when I got to prison, when I first came to prison from Youth Authority, I was young Marv. I was a youngster putting it in. And by 95, I was old dude and pops. <laughs> Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Okay, so so basically, I, I mean, you've been you've been killing the game. When I look on the internet, I could I could find you uh, on on here, man. And you see, so when you when you was in prison, man, let's go back to that for a second, because you hadn't been locked up now for a long time, right? Man, since I've been by uh, the grace of God, I've been home uh, since uh, 1995. I went to the feds for a year on a failure to communicate. And after that, I've been I've been out about 26 years. And that's the part of what I think people don't understand. You've been out for 26 years. you out here maintaining. You know what I mean? Um, I think that's something to applaud. You know what I mean? Because you before that, you was you, were you in and out before that? Mm-hmm. And 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 so what made you what made you get it right? How did you get it right? I think that would be something people would want to know. I mean. Uh, I got it. What it, it wasn't that I got it right. I just when you get tired of being tired, you know it. Your mother. It's about you know your your, your people can pray for you, and I can say that I'm gonna get it right. And like I can say before, God say you'll never change a man until he changes his own heart. Yeah. And um, when I got to prison, when I first came to prison from Youth Authority, I was young Marv. I was a youngster putting it in, and by '95 I was old dude and pops. <laughs> now I'm in prison with dudes that I was in their sons and their grandsons. Wow! And I found out that I had outgrew prison. You feel mm, what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I had an incident one time when I, you know, when I grew up, it was. From the first grade to the sixth grade was elementary. Yeah. Then you went to junior high school. Yeah, yeah, then you yeah. Went that's to high it. School. That's so it. When you, when you was in the sixth grade, you was the boss of the school. That's right. So uh, one day, I, we were getting ready to go to recess, and I snatched the ball. And my teacher told me, Marvin, put that ball. I wanted the ball first. I'm no, I'm rumbling for it. He takes me to the principal office. I go to the principal office, Mr. Thompson, Marvin, what's your problem? I'm pouting. He said, well, man, since you want to act like a third grader, I'm going to put you in the third grade. <laughs> and he sent me over to Miss Holmes' class in the third grade. So when I sat down, my knees was touching the punch. I was too big, <laughs> right? And if you're talking, Miss Holmes would hit you with a ruler. And I got, I was going home, and all the kids were telling hey, your brother's in the third grade. <laughs> like, and it was just a torturing week of me. I Man, I'm out of place here. Man. So after 25 years in prison, my knees start touching the bench. Wow. And it was time to go. You know? That's hard. Uh, uh, a man told me one time, uh, one of the first black business owners of uh, Compton, on, on the Mainstone Compton Boulevard, named uh, Ronald Exum. Uh, he had Exum Styles. Back in the 60s, well, 69, 68, 69, then he got a clothing store like y'all's clothes. But he was the first black entrepreneur on Compton Boulevard wow. before White Flight, right? And he told me, he said, man, you going in, I was about 15, he told me, you going in out of juvenile, man, you go in there, you need to learn a trade. Get you something that you have to do something for. Because if you ain't made it by the time you 40, you need to shoot yourself in the head. I couldn't imagine that at 15, right? And it came to pass that my sister had gotten killed mm. in 1982. And the guy that was accused, his brother was in the same prison with me. And me and my crew was getting ready to go handle that little bit of business. And a brother that was in the Nation of Islam went from the 60s. Brother Yusuf said, wait, brother Mar, man, hold up, bro. We got enough. He said, why don't you do Ramadan with us? Mm. So he said, man, you know, if you want to kill him today, you can kill him in 30 days. Makes sense to me. So he just going to, nowhere. So, so this is the spot. I, I went in, did the Ramadan. And I'm doing Ramadan. And listen, the Nation of Islam and 
the Bahrainians, the new Muslim, um, and we didn't have nothing to do with them. We used to call them abadavas and soft Muslims still smoking cigarettes and eating hog and doing five prayers a day. And you got no discipline, right? So I went in there, but it's every day we do a thirtieth of the Quran and we read in the Quran and in Surah sixty two it says that a woman suckles a child for thirty six months and a man achieves manhood at age forty. So the same thing you did at twenty, you don't do at forty. You start looking both ways, huh? Your thing ain't as quick as it was when you were seventeen, eighteen. You ain't popping it like you was. So if you're in prison at 40, what the hell are you going home for? Uh. In San Quentin, they got what calls Citizens Row, West Block. Everybody over 25, 30 years, the old men is over there. Old men for counsel, young men for war. Mm. In Chino, it's Elm Hall. All the handicaps and the old people. Dude like Bob Wells, he was at the time I was in prison, he did one of the longest times he did, 42 years. And he used to have a cane and be cussing like a sailor, right? But So I'm just saying, when you get to a certain point in your life, you start living a different life if you're a man of any virtue, some people try to live their 16-year-olds as, as they 60, you know. Right. People, man, Ma, why are you trying to act young? I don't act young. I just be down with who I am. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.